Hello, Paradise Panther artists. This is Mrs. Telfer, and I am excited to be back with you learning about our next master artist, Frederick Remington, an American painter and sculptor who was born in 1861. He created some of the most realistic portrayals of life in the Old West, including cowboys, American Indians, and soldiers. So giddy up artists, we're heading to the wild, wild west. Have you ever seen a western movie before? Usually there are two main types of characters in a western around which the story is built. It's the cowboys and the American Indians. Today, I want to tell you about a man who wasn't like either of these characters. He wasn't a cowboy or an American Indian, but he very much belonged to the West. He stood out because he was very different. Let's meet him and find out how he did fit in. This man's name was Frederick Remington. Instead of carrying a gun or a saddle, he had a sketchbook and a pencil in his hands. He was very busy drawing everything in sight. What do you suppose he was doing in the West? Well, he was an artist. Do you think being a Western artist would have been an exciting life? Yes, it was. Ever since he was a child, Frederick Remington was interested in the West, even though he lived in New York, in the East. He finally was able to go west when he was a teenager. When he got there and saw that the land was rapidly being settled, he decided to use his art to record that vanishing way of life. Would you like to see his pictures of the Old West? His art will show us what life was really like during that time. Here we go. What kind of Western characters do you see in this painting? That's right, we see army soldiers. What does it look like they are doing? Well, it is morning and the men are making their breakfast. I want you to think of what you had for breakfast this morning before I tell you what these men ate. For breakfast every day while they were away from their fort, they had thick black coffee, greasy bacon, and perhaps a rock-hard biscuit or two. And that was it for the whole day. No lunch. Was your breakfast better than that? I'm sure it was. And I bet you're hungry again by lunchtime. To better understand the life of these men, Remington went on horseback and camped out with them. This way, he could sketch them having their breakfast and know all about their daily life. Look carefully at this picture and see if you find the same things I do. Do you see bullets on the man's belt? Do you see a man smoking a pipe? Do you see a canteen to hold water? Do you see smoke? rising from their campfires? Very good, nice observations. All of those details that Remington was so careful to put in his pictures make the pictures look very real, don't they? This picture looks real, like we're standing there looking at the soldiers having breakfast. That's because Remington was a realistic painter. Is it natural for a horse to want a saddle and a rider on his back? No, you're right. Here, Remington is showing us a horse's first lesson in having a saddle and a rider on his back. Does it look like the horse is enjoying his lesson? No. Is the cowboy being very careful around the horse? Yes. Breaking a horse in without getting kicked 
was very tricky for him. Does the horse just stand there once the cowboy gets on his back? No, the horse can buck, leap, and even run. The horse does everything in his power to throw off the unwelcome cowboy. Again, this is another realistic painting from Remington. Remington loved horses and knew a lot about them. When he was a little boy, his father trained horses as a hobby. When he went to farms and fairs, he took young Frederick along. Frederick learned to ride very young and always enjoyed horses. He also liked to draw pictures and his favorite things to draw were horses, soldiers, and American Indians. When Remington left school, he traveled to the West of which he had dreamed for so long. For two months, he sketched everything he saw, soldiers, horses, cowboys, and American Indians. This is a rare photo of a young Remington wearing cowboy clothing. After he started traveling around out west as an artist, he usually wore men's city style clothing most of the time. Upon returning to the East, Remington took some of his drawings to Harper's Weekly, one of the most popular magazines of the time. Remington's sketches were published and his career as an illustrator of the West was off to a good start. Soon, his pictures became so popular that editors were calling him. In one year, he sold 170 illustrations to popular magazines. Imagine you're turning the pages in a magazine. Would this next Remington picture catch your attention? Let's see. In this painting, the American Indians and the Cowboys are fighting. Who do you think is in the most danger? Yes, it's the Cowboys. They are outnumbered. Isn't this an exciting moment that Remington captured? He was a master at showing excitement and danger and inviting us in to feel the action. Let's look at all the realistic details he included. Are all the cowboys dressed the same? No, Remington painted the details of their clothing. Are the horses different? Yes, they are. You can see pans, ropes, and blankets packed in the saddles. And you can tell the horses are galloping very fast by the dust and the horse's legs. Now, let's look at the American Indians. Can we see as many little details like we could on the cowboys? No, we can't because they are further away and we can't see the detail. It would seem that Remington was right there sketching this dangerous chase, but he never really saw a fight in person. He would visit the Old West and listen to cowboys tell their exciting tales around the campfire at night. He later would turn their words into sketches. Don't the horses look like they're going to jump from the canvas and into the room? With so many years spent working with horses and observing them carefully with his artist's eyes, Remington was a master at drawing and painting them. His artwork has been praised for accurately showing their movement like the galloping horses we see here. Next, Remington would go back to his home in New York with all the sketches he had done while traveling out west and then paint the scene. To help him, he would bring home all kinds of western things and surround himself with these objects. These souvenirs helped him paint with authentic detail. 
It was very important for Remington that his paintings look true to life. Notice the painting he is working on at the easel. You are going to see it finished soon. A friend described his studio where he painted. He said, props hang on the walls and litter the floor. Axes, clubs, saddles, bows and arrows, moccasins, headdresses, even a small canoe. When he became famous and could afford it, Remington had his studio built large enough for a horse and a rider to pose inside of it. Can you pick out how Remington used some of those props when he painted this picture? Yes, we can. Will you see any of those props in the next masterpiece? Let's take a look. Do you know the word for this type of art? It is called sculpture, and it has just as many details as Remington's paintings. Even in his sculpture, Remington made it look realistic with many details. There's so much excitement that it's fun to first let your eyes wander over the sculpture, wherever they want to go. Now, let's study it more closely. Notice how each horse's head is held in a different position. Do they look like they are galloping very hard? Yes, they are. Notice how the artist shows the powerful action of the horse's legs. Above the horses, we see that the positions of the cowboy's heads are just like the positions of the horse's heads. If the horse's head is up, the cowboy's head is up. Does this make you feel how much the horse and the cowboy work together as one? Yes, it does. Do you see the smoke from the firing guns? Remington cleverly used a thin wire for the smoke. Why do you suppose the cowboys are in such a hurry? Well, the cowboys on the cattle drives were known for being thirsty when they arrived at the end of the trail. That is what Remington is showing us here. This was Remington's 10th sculpture and probably his most famous. It was a difficult sculpture to do. Do you see that one horse is completely suspended in the air with all four feet off the ground? Even in his sculpture, Remington made it look realistic with a lot of detail. Each face is different and the men's clothing is also detailed. By now, I hope you are getting an idea of how it felt to be a part of the Old West. Beware, buffalo, or more accurately, bison can be dangerous. American Indians were expert buffalo hunters, but even they ran into trouble with these large, powerful, and fast animals. Bison were an important food source for many American Indians of the Old West. No part of the animal was wasted. They used the fur for warmth, the hide for teepees, and the bones for tools. The next painting shows another alarming moment. Can you tell what is happening here? Do you think there is trouble brewing? Yes, let me tell you the story shown here. It seemed impossible for the many tribes to live together without fighting. In the foreground, this Crow American Indian braces himself for what is bound to happen. His horse has been ridden down and can go no further. Notice the horse's flesh is shiny with sweat after running so hard. And what do you see in the background? Yes, the American Indians are advancing. 
how did Remington show us that the American Indians were in the background? Well, they are smaller and have less detail. Can we see as many little details like we could on the Crow American Indian in the foreground? No, because they are further away. Now, notice the landscape. They were traveling in the desert where it was dry with no trees and dusty with low, flat mountains. As in the rest of his art, Remington showed exactly what the landscape was like. Remington tried to study the life of the American Indian just as much as he did the cowboy. But that was very difficult to do. Many people warned him about trying to study the American Indians. None of the American Indians would stand still while his picture was drawn. Remington would make rapid sketches, but the American Indians would quickly disappear. Remington continued to live and work in the East but he traveled in the West every year for several months. On these trips, the artist made many sketches and took along a camera for snapshots. Even then, his research wasn't always easy. Do you think the next American Indian we see will also be in trouble? Let's find out. What feelings do you get from this American Indian? Is he afraid in his mountain home? No, Remington shows us an American Indian trapper who is very sure of himself. To keep warm while traveling on the mountain trails, he is dressed in the furs and skins of animals he has trapped. He knows the land and the way of the beaver by heart. What do you see in this picture that is very different from our last painting? Yes, the American Indian is dressed differently. Also, the landscape is different. We can see a beautiful landscape with more vegetation, more color, and a higher altitude. For this next painting, Frederick Remington chose a different time of day. Let's check it out. What time of day is it? You're right, it's nighttime. Imagine that if you were inside this stagecoach, it might feel rough, bumpy, noisy, or even dusty. Does it seem a bit mysterious? Why do you suppose Remington chose to show us this at night? Maybe it shows a harder ride, more danger of attack, and makes it that much more mysterious. What draws your attention the most in this painting? Is it the light inside or the white on the horse? Would the picture be as interesting without those patches of light? No, I don't think so either. You've seen some of Remington's paintings and sculptures. Now let's meet our famous artist again. Let's compare these pictures of Remington. Remember how I told you he didn't dress like a cowboy? Well, for his self-portrait, he painted himself in Western clothing. He usually wore a huge red coat, tight riding breeches, and hunting boots like the English would wear. Everyone liked him with his big smile and his love of the West. Aren't you glad he showed us what the West was really like? Before we head out of the Old West, Let's be sure we know what these Remington vocabulary words mean. Today we learned about landscape. 
The landscape is the scenery of the painting, such as the mountains, valleys, trees, rivers, and forests. The foreground is what is closest to the viewer of the painting, and the background is what is farthest away. Thanks for being such a good traveler today as we headed back to the time of the wild, wild west. I hope you enjoyed your trip and I can't wait to explore our next master artist with you. Great job, Paradise Panther artist.